righty, welcome to day two of your introduction to yoga. Nancy and Pamela here. Today we're gonna work on hip flexion and extension. So moving your legs forward and back, like the kinds of things you do walking, going upstairs, riding your bike, you know, weightlifting, all those things. So start up on your back with your feet flat. We call this, we use this pose a lot, called constructive rest. And just like yesterday, we're gonna zero in on that lumbar spine, the part that's off the floor. Just take some deep breaths here. Belly soft, feel the expansion of your chest. On the inhale, everything's contracting on the exhale. I'm gonna add a little movement to this. So take your inhale, and then on your exhale, you're gonna tip your tailbone forward a little bit. And then on your inhale, you're gonna drop it down in the other direction. So you're just rocking your pelvis a little bit with your breath. Inhale, your belly gets a little longer. Exhale, it gets a little shorter. Inhale, your back contracts a little bit. Exhale, it gets a little bit longer. And your chin will go along for the ride. That's awesome. And this is very relaxing to the nervous system. Another thing that we're doing here is waking up and sort of babying the big muscles in the front of our hips, the hip flexor muscles. You might have heard the phrase, sitting is the new smoking. The reason is that your hip flexor muscles, when you sit all the time, get very short. And there's a lot of bad things that happen. Your posture is worse, you're all pulled forward, and some very important relaxation response tissues run through the front of your hips, your psoas muscle, your vagus nerve. So we're gonna work on lengthening those guys today. Alrighty, so come back to neutral. You can let that movement go. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then, um, bring your Camilla, bring your feet a little bit closer, so a little bit like hip width, and bring your right knee up into your chest. You can grab in front or behind the knee. This is um, a pose called Apanasana. The translation into English is wind relieving pose, which might be useful to you sometime in your life. <laughs> now, if this feels good, you can extend your left leg straight down the mat. You'll know right away if that's not a good thing in your low back, doesn't matter. So you'll notice, if, and if it's too much, just put your foot back. Your left hip is now extended. It's long in the front. Your right hip is deeply flexed. So this can just feel good. You can rock that knee a little side to side. You can roll your right ankle around while you're here. And then if your left leg is extended fully, bring the left foot back to the floor, the sole of the foot back to the floor, and let's cross the right ankle over the left knee. So this is a figure four. Make sure that the, those toes are, fl are flexed a little bit. That'll protect your knee. If you want to rock a little side to side here, it might feel good in that hip. This is a rotation of the hip. Mostly we're going to work on that tomorrow, but we want to do a little bit of balance motion today. Alrighty, and then you can put that foot back down. Bring the left knee into your chest and just give it a squeeze. Again, you can grab in front of the knee or behind the knee. If this feels okay, you can extend the right leg straight down the mat. Might be different on this side. Your low back might feel, feel not so happy about it on this side, even though it was fine on the other side. Little rocks, it's all good. And then bring your right foot back sole of the foot on the floor, left ankle crosses over the right knee, flex that foot, you can send that left knee away from you, you can rock your hips a little side to side, it might feel good, a little bit of a twist into your spine. And then come on back to where we started. All right, so get your feet right up as close to your bottom as you can get them. And we're gonna do some bridging. So on an inhale, press your feet down and lift your hips up off the floor. You can walk your shoulders underneath you a little bit if that feels good. You don't have to get them very far. You can grab your hands. Just gonna take three breaths here. Make sure your hips are, your heels are spun out a little bit. 
can play with how far apart your feet are from each other. This feels different and it might suit your body better at different places. If interlacing your hands is not on the cards, grab the edges of your mat and then slowly come on down. Take a breath in and out. One more breath in and out. Now we're going to bridge on breath. So on inhale, lift your hips up and exhale, bring them down. You're not going to do much with your arms for this first couple. Inhale, lift up extending your hips, exhale, coming on down. Now, if you want to add your arms here, as you inhale and lift your hips, arms will come over your head to the floor behind you. Exhale, come on down. A few more of these. Inhale, come on up. Now your glutes are working, your hamstrings, the back of your legs and hips are working here. You use the back of the body to stretch the front of the body. Last time, come on down. Just take a breath or two right here. And then when you're ready, knees can come in, give them a squeeze. And then rock on over to your side body and come on up to tabletop, just like we did yesterday. Coming into cat and cows. So inhaling, taking your back bend, exhaling, angry cat lifting the back of your heart up toward the ceiling take a couple of those on your breath seeing if you can start the motion in your tailbone and roll all the way through your spine and then coming on back to neutral we'll press back to downward facing dog feet hip width, hips are lifting up behind you. You can always do this with your hands on a piece of furniture, some blocks, the wall. Let's take a few breaths. And then when you're ready, you're gonna step your right foot forward into a low lunge. Could take you 12 steps to get there and drop your left knee down to the floor. So come on up and put your hands on that right knee. Now, Pamela is way extended in that back hip. You might be more at 90-90 with your hips way up here, and that might be plenty of stretch in the front of your left hip. If you have the flexibility, you can walk that front foot out and have more of a diagonal. Wherever you are, press into the floor. Press the front foot down, press the knee down, press the back foot down, and you'll feel that stretch go right up the front of your left hip. If you want, you can make this a little more intense by lifting your left arm up into the air. Oh, that feels good. Three, two, and then bring both hands down on either side of the front foot. You might need some, um, so one on either side, probably. There you go. <laughs> we'll start off there. Ah, yeah, we'll start off there. And then curl your back toes under and just lift up that back knee. So you can walk the, the um, foot a little more toward the midline so you can get the knee inside your shoulder there. There you go. And you might, again, you might want to get some blocks under your hands. You're dropping your hips down and trying to lift your heart up. So beautiful straight line from your back heel to the back of your head. Now, if your front knee is happy and healthy, you can start to straighten that front knee out. Drop your head down. You can even pick your front toe up here. And then on an inhale, come on back to the lunge. So lunging in that front leg and then straightening. And you can pick one of these poses and stay there or you can alternate. All right, so we're working flexion in the front leg, extension in the back hip, and then eventually Come to that lunge and just gently step your back foot forward to the front of the mat. Your feet are going to be hip width apart and bend your knees as much as you need to so you can kind of lay your torso onto your thighs. Head is heavy. You could shake out your, your neck. Yes, no. If your hands aren't reaching the floor, that's fine. You can grab your shins. You can grab your elbows. Opposite elbows might feel nice. That puts a little more weight into the spine. 
And here, just try rocking your weight forward and back, rocking side to side, a little sway. You'll feel this in your hips differently depending upon where the weight is landing in your feet. So when your weight is in your toes, you're gonna to feel it go up the front of your legs and weight in your heels, you'll feel it more in the back of your legs. And you can play with how far apart it feels good to have your feet here. And then when you're ready, you're gonna step your right leg to the back of the mat and drop the back knee down for that low lunge on the other side. Hands come to the front knee and you'll see how far you can bring your hips forward and down. If you are stacked straight up and down, that's okay. You're still gonna be feeling a stretch in the front of that right hip, or you can be deeply flexed this way into that front knee. Just taking a bunch of breaths, press into the front foot, press into the knee, press into the back foot, feel your hip flexors on that right side opening up. And a lot of us, it's the, the tightest part of the body, the right hip flexor. So um, take some deep breaths here. If you wanna raise your right arm up and accentuate it even more. Three, two, and then bring the hands both down to the floor on either side of the foot, curl your back toes under and lift up that back knee. So wiggle your weight around forward and back. You wanna make sure there's some width between your feet side to side, that will make you more stable. Hmm. So dropping your hips, lifting your heart a little bit, lengthening your back body. And if that front knee is healthy, you can start to straighten the left leg, maybe pick up the left toes even, maybe not. And then come back to the lunge on an inhale, straighten on your exhale. So you can do this alternation, lunging and straightening, nice and gentle, or you can pick one of these poses and hang out there. Blocks under your hands are gonna make it a whole lot more accessible. And then coming back to your lunge, just gently step that right foot all the way forward. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uttanasana, forward fold, feet nice and wide, and drop your head. All right, so from here, take a few breaths, and then we're gonna work on coming up to standing. There's a couple different ways to come up to standing. One is on an inhale, come to a flat back. So extend your spine so it's parallel to the floor. Your knees can be bent, hands on your shins, and then exhale, fold forward again. Inhale to flat back and exhale, fold. So this is a hinging motion in your hips. This time we'll come all the way to standing. Inhale to flat back and keeping your back mostly straight, come on up. So that's a way to come forward and down from standing to a forward fold with a hip hinge. So again, hinge to your flat back and then fold all the way forward. A very different way to come up is to roll up, we give this cue vertebra by vertebra. So slowly rolling, articulating all the different parts of your spine, rather than inhaling to a flat back, you're gonna slowly roll your spine all the way up to standing. Now, some parts of your spine are more, are more flexible than others, so that's okay. And then roll yourself all the way back down from your head, rolling all the way down. Inhale to your flat back and exhale, fold. Now roll all the way up to standing. Right, two very different motions, both of which you can practice. All right, we're coming to our apex pose now, warrior one, our first big standing pose. Step your left foot to the back of the mat. Now, placement of your feet in this pose, there's a million things to say about it. <laughs> Typical first, um, alignment cue is people will say you want to be aligned heel to heel. I know very few people who can actually do that in a healthy way in their body. You have to be very, very narrow and very flexible. Most people are going to want to have some width between their feet side to side. You want about probably three feet between your feet, depending upon how, how tall you are. 
the front knee is bent, the back foot is on a like a 45 degree diagonal. So you're pointing not to the side wall and not to the front wall, maybe a little more to the front wall, because the idea is you're squaring your hips to the front of the mat. Your left hip is coming just as far forward as your right hip, or at least that's the hope. You want, your, your legs are very asymmetrical, but you want, if not your hips fully squared, then at least your ribs fully squared to the front of the room. Now, once you have your feet here, you're gonna start to press into the feet. So press particularly into the big toe mound of the front foot and see if you can find the outer edge, the pinky toe edge of the back foot and use that press to steer your hips to square forward to the front of the mat. From here, you can lift your arms up. Now, if that feels really tiring, I really like to interlace my hands behind my head and that gives a tremendous opening in the chest. You'll feel that right between your shoulder blades, your armpits. You can wiggle around here. Keep the breath moving. So keep coming back to your legs. You can always, if you feel tippy here, you can do this near a wall or a chair. You can have one hand on the back of a chair. Taking a bunch of breaths. Three, you can look up if you like. Make it a little bit of a heart opener. Just don't puff your ribs out. Your ribs are tucked under. Your tailbone is tucked under. I forgot where we were in the count. <laughs> one more <laughs> breath here. Bring your arms down, step the back foot forward and hinge to your forward fold. Give your low back a little bit of a rest. Shake your head out, sway a little side to side. Hmm. And then slowly come rolling up to standing, one vertebra at a time. Maybe roll your shoulders back a couple times when you get there. All right, this time your right foot will step back, taking warrior one. So setting up all that good alignment. Front foot is straight forward and back, back foot at that 45 degree angle. And then use your core strength, especially that left side of your core to square your torso toward the front of the mat. We call this closed hips, right? Tomorrow we'll do open hips. Closed hips. Ribs tuck under, tailbone tucks under. We got flexion in the front hip, extension in the back hip, so healthy. And then if you feel like it, arms come up, you can interlace and wiggle around, feel your shoulder blades massaging into all those places. Those big strong muscles all along your spine are getting lengthened. And then when you're ready, arms can reach. Four. Big breathing. Three, your belly is a little tucked in. So it's not so much the abdominal breath we've been talking about. You'll feel it more in your chest. It's more activating, maybe emphasizing your inhales. Two. Big inhale. And exhale, release your arms, step your right foot forward, hinge into your forward fold. A little sway. Shake out your head, yes and no. All righty. And then when you're ready, Step your, from, from here, see if you can get your hands onto the floor, step your feet to the back of the mat and find your downward facing dog. Could take you 12 steps, it's all right. And from here, we're gonna shift the weight forward so your shoulders come over your wrists. It's a plank pose and just lower yourself all the way to the floor. Could spend a lot of time here, but today we're not. Put your head to one side, arms beside you. Hmm. Take a few juicy breaths. You can uncurl your toes and just have your feet flat. That feels all right. Maybe bend your knees here and drop your heels side to side. We call this windshield wiping. Nice, easy relaxation into the low back. And then set your legs back down when you're ready. Just turn your head the other way so you get the opposite stretch on your neck. And there you have it, day two. 
extended hips. We'll see you tomorrow.